My name is Sebi Ali and I am the country lead for the Tobacco Control Data Initiative in Nigeria. I'm speaking here to Dr. Akinele of the National Tobacco Control Research Group. Um, Dr. Akinele, can you please introduce yourself? Thank you, Sema. Um, I'm Dr. Akinele Adili, just like you said. Um, I work with the College of Medicine, University of Nevada. Um, I'm a researcher and as well as a lecturer. So I do research in cancer prevention uh, health systems research. Uh, I'm also the coordinator of the Nigerian Tobacco Control Research Group. And currently, the president elect of the International Epidemiology Association. I've done quite some work with uh, tobacco control advocates and uh, other stakeholders in tobacco control for Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Um, Dr. Kinele, can about your background in tobacco control, what drew you to this work? I grew up all my life being, you know, bombarded with, um, you know, tobacco exposure in school, and then also um, this advert. I, I don't, I don't know whether you remember the uh, advert on tobacco makes you to play football very well, um, and then. Many of my friends were using targets then to be able to, you know, uh, supposedly improve their performance to play football, which was all a lie. But we didn't know as kids then. And also in the background was the social acceptance of some form of, you know, um, tobacco use among the adults. You have visitors that would smoke, and then uh, this top would be in the, you know, in the hash trees, and then um, you find the children trying to imitate what the adults were doing, take off the stop length, and try to do something. Um, so when I became a public health physician, um, I decided that there must be something that must be done about it. People need help. Tobacco or health in Mumbai um, was a turning point for me. Um, we had quite a lot of evidence from advanced uh, developed countries, but very few evidence from um, Africa. Um, yes, Africans were really doing well, but there was nothing really that was spectacular from the African continent. And that was when I decided, uh, we had some chat, we had a Nigerian delegation to the uh, WCTOH, WCTOH, yeah, you know, uh, then decided that we needed to work together. Advocates, researchers, you know, uh, government officials, and that was the tool. Can you tell us how you got involved in the Tobacco Control Data Initiative program? Yeah, um, I, I think, like I said before, that we um, we started working together um, for the very first time. We, the Nigerian tobacco community had credibility because we brought complementary skill sets um, from academia, from the civil society organizations, and then we had champions in government who were supporting. Um, so. It was a close-knit community. So um, I think somebody talked to someone and then recommended that, oh, if you're talking about um, tobacco control, you needed to reach out to um, a few people. And I think I was one of those that was mentioned. Um, so when um, I was contacted about, oh, would you like to be part of this? Um, I was delighted. Why? Um, the major reason why I was delighted was that um, a few years back, we actually talked about um, the lack of a central place, a platform, to aggregate data and aggregate information about tobacco control in Nigeria. 
And at that point, um, a website was actually mooted, um, but it was not funded. Uh, unfortunately, you know, that put paid to that. Um, of course, there are a few things that a few people did um, here and there, but it wasn't a concerted effort, you know, bringing together expertise and all that. So when I heard about this, I was really very happy that, um, I mean, it doesn't matter who is doing it, as long as it's done, um, and it moves us forward. Um, that, would, that, would, that, would be, that would be exciting. Can you maybe speak a bit more about your role in the Tobacco Control Data Initiative program so far? How have you supported the program? And maybe you can also speak a bit about what is your impression of the dashboard so far? Okay, so um, I should, um, you know, uh, I have a few stories to tell. But when we were pushing the um, legislation on tobacco control within Africa, a few, in Nigeria specifically, um, a few of the um, National Assembly men asked us that, uh, show us the good data. Um, don't come bombarding us with evidence from elsewhere. So um, I had that at the back of my mind because that had, that had informed most of the work that I've done so far. So um, in working with the um, TCDI on this tobacco uh, data initiative, my role was to um, curate data, find out about the evidence that is local, and yet meets international standards. Um, look at some of the evidence that we put forward, critique it, and be sure that it meets, you know, um, the rigor that is expected of, you know, scientific evidence, so that we are informing people uh, based on science and not based on ASC or based on, you know, um, emotions. We need it to be credible. So my role was actually to look through, um, find some data if there is non-existing, because there is something that is called uh, gray literature. Sometimes you find that um, something may not be published, or maybe just limited in circulation. So my role was to find out such data and see if it meets the standard, um, also uh, recommend it to the TCDI to be included. And what has been your impression so far um, from the initial staging sites, which you had privy to, all the way to the to what we currently have now of the dashboard? Well, it's been an enjoyable journey. And what we have now, I'm very proud to put my name on it and say that I was part of this. Um, more so, it's I mean, it's um, um, user-friendly, so you can navigate, you know, easily through it. And if you're doing advocacy work, you can also refer um, government officials, legislators to take a look at it. Um, that to me, because more importantly, the dashboard should be able to help us in pushing our work forward and in moving us um, towards our goals in tobacco control. So the, the, the way that it's presented, the data is presented, is in, um, it's usable, um, and then you can easily reference it. So in your personal capacity, as well as in your role with the NTCRG, can you tell us how you envision to use this dashboard in your work? OK. Um, like I said, it's something that can, you can easily reference, and um, it's also easy, pleasing to the highs, you know. Uh, so when you want to, for me, if I'm doing advocacy work, I can easily refer people to it. Um, have a look at this, this is what we're talking about. Um, for students who are also starting off, because I also run a program in tobacco control at the College of Medicine University of Ibadan. Um, a 
it's a gentle introduction to tobacco control. Uh, so both ways, either for advocacy or for teaching purposes, it suits my needs. Uh, but yes, that's a really great use case for us to learn that the dashboard is also going to be useful for your students. Um, because uh, at some point, we would like for the dashboard to also be used in teaching um, colleges and for research purposes. So we're really happy to hear that you're already thinking about that. Can you tell us what kind of decisions you will be making with this dashboard, like in actual tangible ways? OK, it's also related to the um, last question. Yes. Um, we would use it to move tobacco control forward. We we'll use it in our conversation with government officials. We we'll use it in our conversation with um, champions. We we'll also use it in drawing attention to the huge problem that tobacco poses to the nation. From your perspective, having looked at the dashboard, is there any graphic or any particular theme um, or infographic given the way that the data is presented that particularly calls to you um, and stands out? Well, the tax aspect actually is um, pleasant to the eyes. It's good to see. Um, I also think the prevalence data also is quite good. Um, you can easily, people um, can easily look at the infographic, the, 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 the graph, and be able to understand what's going on. I think that's great. Uh, but if I choose any aspect more than the other, um, and I think I'll be remiss in my, in, my, in my duty, I think I would like to recommend everything about the dashboard to whoever wants to use it. Yeah, you can use a part without the other. Um, all parts work together. Uh, they fit the same purpose. Before um, the TCDI dashboard uh, became a, a tool for you in your, in your work, where did you typically get the information that we have there, which you get from? As a researcher, it's always a, um, a big body. Because then I have to look at different sources. I have to look at the WHO website, check the uh, campaign for tobacco control, uh, uh, campaign for uh, tobacco free kids, um, check systematic reviews and what have you. So it's always um, kind of, you have to look at multiple sources. Uh, even when they're not preparing something, for presentation, you just want a, a, a quick glance. You just wanted to be reminded very quickly about something you are missing out, you know, um, or you just want to wrap your brains around some aspect that you feel so strongly about and you are discussing and you really want a quick reference. Um, that to me is a big burden uh, because then you have to do this every time because we are not computers. Uh, so having a dashboard where you can easily go to at a glance in conversations you can easily reference, uh, to me, is a beauty. It's really great um, because, like you mentioned, a lot of the different information that you would have typically been pulling from different sources is now already curated into this one-stop shop, so, so to speak. Um, so that's really great that you have that at the tip of your hands and I hope that that makes your work easier going forward. Definitely.